Hi and welcome to another quick video to demonstrate some of the features and capabilities of the uh, HP ArcSight solution. In this particular video I'm going to focus on the uh, LogFoo capability. Uh, joking aside, uh, this was created by the developers are uh, kind of like, think of it this way, Kung Fu for logs, LogFoo. So th there's some logic there from the naming. But what it does is it allows me to, to graphically visualize the log data generated by several different components of the ArcSight solution. Now in this case I'm going to look at the connectors. I'm going to look at the connector data as well. Uh, this is really useful because uh, if I take a look at the log data there's a huge amount of that and ArcSight Solutions will generate a a good amount of quality information as part of the log data itself so we can understand what's really going on. The difficulty is, is there's a lot there to process so if I just do a, a simple case of looking at the uh, agent.log itself you'll see there's a whole load of data in there uh, that may or may not be meaningful to what I'm interested in. Uh, what LogFood does is allows me to visualize that and, and show that data itself. Now uh, you run it, it's pretty straightforward to run. Uh, I can see uh, uh, or the, the specific things to bear in mind here is that you have to run it from the folder that the logs are stored in. So you can, you can see here this is, this is where the logs folder is for the connector itself. I run it from that particular folder because it reuses that, but I need to point it to the shell script that starts the, the actual uh, uh, connector itself. So that's why it's dot dot slash bin arcsite. Uh, obviously this works on Windows as well. That's absolutely not a problem. Just use the relevant uh, constructs for doing it on Windows as well. That's no issue. Uh, I then run it. It then uh, runs through the data, creates some indexes and so on. Uh, let me just shuffle in the uh, the diagrams there uh, to show the data. And the clever thing here is I just right mouse click. Uh, I can show the uh, event window here. It creates all the indexing. Again, let me just shuffle that in. Let me just make that a little bit smaller so I can uh, view all the data on a not a gigantic screen uh, to keep the size a little bit more reasonable. Now what we actually have in here is all of the available plot data uh, for that's stored in the actual uh, log files for the connector itself. There's a huge amount of information. It's really useful to see what's going on. Uh, but the point is I can actually look at some of this data and make it um, plot the data in this graphic window so I can see what's going on. So what does it mean? What, what can I see? One of the useful things, uh, and of course these run as Java virtual machines, so it's actually very useful to understand what's going on with regards to the memory of the actual connector and what what's being used as part of that. So if I just find the uh, memory usage, uh, because with a JVM you are limited with a maximum amount of memory set. Now that's a common issue is that you'll hit that maximum it'll then run into what they call garbage collection in a desperate attempt to uh, to, to save some memory. Um, so it would be really useful to, to, to see how much it used and of course I just click that and enable it. Now I can see how much memory is being used by the JVM as it's going through the processing of uh, that particular time interval that we've set. Now that's what we've set here. Wouldn't it be really useful to understand what the total was? So we can see what the total memory usage applied against the actual used. Now we can see that we're running to these higher peaks here which means that we are actually getting close to the upper levels of the uh, um, the actual included memory here. So I, I can just hover over these particular points and it will show me the amount of memory used. So I can see here is up to 243 uh, meg of memory that's been used for these particular uh, times. So that does mean that there are some, some situations where we are running at the limit it's not actually going over so we're not hitting some uh, longer term issues here but we can see that it might be useful it might be prudent to make sure that we allocate a little bit more memory to the JVM so we're not hitting some of that issues. Uh, there are other things that we can apply to the data I'll just unclick it there. So what is it what what kind of events are we seeing what's the the, the frequency of these events and what's the, what is that pl plotted over so we're just again just ticking the particular, uh, this particular case it's a, an Apache log file, uh, just clicking over it. Of course if I hover over it it will give me a description of what it means if it doesn't make total amount of sense to you. So we can see that there's some data here, we can see that the events are being processed, we are getting peaks of data. Now it's a file so that makes sense because files are being dropped and then those new files are being read and processed. So we, that's why we see big jump in, in actual number uh, of the events per second being processed and then drop off as we're waiting for the next file. So of course it's an average that's calculating. So we can see that there's, a, so there's some sequencing of processing that's going on here. So now we're starting to understand a little bit more under, uh, of what's actually going on uh, and, and the data that's being processed. Uh, total amount of volume sent the data, we can see what's going there, we can see it's it's flattening and leveling out, so we can see what the, the, the overall uh, processing from that point of view, we can see there's some different destinations which is really useful. What we can also see, and I'm not going to go through all the options here, is actually looking and it will break down the 
the different types of messages that you see as well. So all of this data is up here, which is really useful. But what it's actually doing is it's it's pulling out the log message errors as well, and it's giving you an option to view that. So you can now overlay that with other information. Now we're actually getting, in this particular connector, we're getting some issues to do with uh, sending of the data with to the destination. Uh, so we're actually seeing what these socket exceptions so we can see when that's occurring. What is occurring at a particular time interval here? That's very strange. We can also see that there's some uh, particular exceptions to do with the interrupt of the Java uh, JVM as well, itself. We can see the particular times. This is not a this is not a, a value. This is a particular time that's being being viewed. So wouldn't it be really useful if I then, for example, overlay that with I don't know the memory? So am I actually running out of memory at a particular time? So if I look at the used memory. So I can now overlay that data and go, does the time that there's a JVM exception occurring at the time that it's running out of memory? Well, actually, no. No, it's not. I can see that that's not occurring. I can see that, the, that I can't really infer that that's a particular issue there. So that's something else that's occurring here. So again, let me just look at some more data down here. Let me just undo that. Let's look at the socket exception here. Uh, and maybe let's apply that with the events uh, per second as well. Is that being processed? Actually, no. I'm seeing a huge amount of data here. So and then it seems to be picking up. So actually what it looks like is I've got a problem initially processing here. I've got an issue with some of the uh, some of the, the data not going through. So I probably want to look on the next sequence before this uh, and change some of the time period to look at what's going on here and, and see what the issues are accordingly. So there's lots of options, lots of things I could be digging into here, lots of uh, particular things I can be overlaying and, and viewing the data. You can do more than two. I've just demonstrated two, but you can actually demonstrate multiple overlays of the charts. You can, of course, just right mouse. You can even save that as a JP, uh, JPG for, for later analysis or including in a report and so on. There's lots of different options to look at. We can even analyze additional log data from other components to even see how a connector is sending to ESM or Express and so on. It's, it becomes a very, very sophisticated and clever tool for visualization of what's actually going on. It's a hidden little feature. Not many customers know about it. Very, very powerful. And I do recommend uh, you digging into and having a closer look at what's available as part of that. So that's enough from me from the moment. Uh, I hope you find that useful and uh, can use LogFu to troubleshoot and see what issues are going on with your ArcSight deployments. Thank you very much for your time.